Vikas Khemani joins us live. He's uh, Chief Executive Officer with Edelweiss Securities. Vikas, good morning and good to have you back. Uh, Vikas, we've got hit hard uh, in last four or five days. Nifty lo has lost more than 3%. We are down more than 200 points from the recent high. Is the party over? I think Nikunj, after a, such a sharp rally, uh, I think this kind of consolidation bound to happen uh, given the fact that I think uh, a, uh, you know, uh, uh, still on the ground uh, action is yet to uh, be seen or you know improvement in data is yet to be seen and secondly I think from international side uh, you know there are again talks have been uh, sort of resurfaced on the uh, QE taper so I think these two things sectors are right now sort of putting market in a sort of corrective or consolidation phase and I think after such a sharp rally it is always sort of uh, expected so I think we are in that phase and I would tend to think that you know given the fact that this month there are not many triggers I think you know next trigger is only in form of you know, state election outcomes and I think that would probably bring some more uh, you know sort of uh, action to the market but I think you know there are no major triggers at this point in time and the international news flow also sort of uh, slowing down the flows towards the market which was driving the market way up so I think you know in, in light of this I would think that you know markets will sort of uh, consolidate around these levels and maybe you know if the rupee continues to depreciate uh, the way it has in the recent past uh, and I think one has to see how sort of uh, where it finds some sort of support, uh, you know, uh, how how low it can go. And if it continues, then the worry of the interest interest rates further going up. Uh, and again, I think banking system uh, taking a lead in terms of correction could also creep in. So I think now, you know. One has to really see how this, uh, uh, you know, risk off around based on uh, QE taper, uh, what kind of noise level it makes across the emerging market, and I think uh, that would be a critical factor to decide in terms of short term movement uh, what is going to happen in the market. Mm. So, Vikas, do you think the market will now sort of step into a corrective phase, as has been the case post Diwali, or do you think this is just mere consolidation and we would bounce back in a day or two? No, I, I don't see uh, the kind of uh, correction or kind of panic which we saw uh, you know last time when the QE taper uh, sort of noise was there because I think this time around preparedness and sensitivity of the market is uh, definitely better than or far higher than what it was last time. So I don't definitely do not see that kind of panic uh, sort of settling in. But at the same time, you know, uh, I also don't see as you mentioned that in the next couple of days uh, market to recover because as I said this, this month there is no major trigger uh, in terms of liquidity for, for liquidity to resume. So I think we have uh, next week after FMC minutes coming out. We'll have to get some. We'll get some more color in that. Plus, I think I think next decisive uh, sort of uh, move, in my opinion, you will from a flow perspective, liquidity perspective, we'll get to hear only when we see uh, some trigger either in form of local issues or uh, you know on the QE uh, taper. And I think QE taper unlikely will get any clarity according to me. And this will keep market fairly you know sort of uh, volatile according to me because I think ev every now and then based on various kind of data which comes from you know various I mean developed markets will definitely create various hypotheses and you know uh, 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 market opinions. And that according to me. Uh, would keep market volatile. Anything happening, I mean, the, the action on the QE uh, taper would only happen probably next year, you know, in February, March. So I think uh, till then, market will remain uh, sort of keep guessing what is going to be the direction. And I think uh, any data coming out will sort of create various hypotheses. And, and I feel market will remain volatile. Also, we have a local event in terms of state election that also will keep market volatility high. So I think we are in a fairly sort of going to be in a fairly volatile uh, sort of uh, zone for some time. When you say volatile, do you think at the top we are going to remain intact at 60 to or there is a, a, a case wherein we could see much higher levels than that? I would not think, you know, and uh, the top would be, you know, breached in any, any time in a hurry, you know, at least till the time one gets any sort of clarity on the QE uh, taper. Uh, I think uh, state election definitely, let's say, assuming that there is a mood which comes out in favor of ND or something, market would definitely cheer that. But will it be decisive in terms of taking and breaching the previous highs or, uh, or the recent highs? Uh, I have my doubt because I think you will need huge amount of uh, uh, liquidity support, huge amount of flows to come in. And flows, flows I think, will only come in, uh, you know, once the sort of there is a clarity. Uh, 
uh, chunky flows will come means there is a clarity uh, on the QE front which uh, off late I have you know based on our interaction with the investor we have seen off late investors have gone slow investors have been very cautious in terms of putting in you know very significant amount of money so I think th those talks are back and till then I guess liquidity would be a sort of tentative or will not be very, very major driving force and hence I feel that you know probably you know you might not uh, uh, test the you know recent highs in any time in a hurry. I want to just take a quick detour and uh, talk about rupee once again because rupee is down for the fifth day on the trot and even though the global setup is not all that scary at least this Tuesday morning the decline clearly continues uh, for Indian currency uh, you could blame it on uh, global adjustment uh, on fear that tapering could be advanced or simple profit booking the bottom line here is that rupee now is trading way below 63 and it is now threatening to go below 63 and a half because do you think we should not worry about uh, foreign flows because in the month of August and September when the economic condition for India was scary we saw moderate, moderate outflows and if I look at the behavioral finance of uh, behavioral pattern of what foreigners have done to in Indian equities they have bought into Indian equities irrespective of the environment. So I think see they they have been you know reasonably uh, good buyers in the Indian equities and best buy largely I think you know post uh, I think after uh, the QE worries in the last uh, in the last time got over I think we saw significant amount of ETF flows coming and I think in that we saw a fairly good amount of money coming in and I think that was uh, what drove the market from 53, 5400 levels to 6000 levels and I think you know the question is that whether that will continue or not. Uh, and I think uh, uh, one has to real and so far they have been I think you know continuously buying in India we have not seen a major outflow uh, in Indian equities. So I think one uh, so the multiple hypothesis one can ma ma make about it. One hypothesis is there I think India is still you know offers from a long term you know perspective risk reward uh, you know given the you know I think this is sort of next 6 to 8 months there is uncertainty but from a longer term perspective India offers a good uh, uh, risk reward good uh, you know uh, equity environment and I think you know some amount of equity ETF flows and equity flows and India ends up finding find, uh, ends up finding larger proportion in the ETF flows in the emerging market basket than as compared to other nations I think China has been going slow Brazil has been going slow so I think most of the uh, large part of the allocations ends up coming to the you know Indian markets uh, uh, within the emerging market basket and India has been beneficiary of that and we hope that it continues to remain that should that not happen I think definitely there will be uh, pressure on the currency uh, uh, no doubt about it and I think also not that not to say that our, while numbers have been improving but still structurally we have to see how we address our current account deficit it has been improving export data has been improving but I think it takes time for industry to adjust new capacities to come and you know trade to adjust so I do hope that you know in next you know sort of uh, uh, three to six months our export uh, really become robust then I think uh, some amount of improvement happens on the current account deficit for us to sort of be less dependent on the on the you know uh, portfolio flows because I think more you are dependent on portfolio flows it remains very susceptible to kind of volatility and uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, tentativity which we have seen in the past. Mm. Right. Uh, stay with us, because lots more to chat about. For now, though, let's just cut across to Adi Godridge.